May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. What is this All Saints Sunday all about? Who are these holy ones, the ones who went before us? They are the saints. Today I want to talk about the significance of this day, about these heroes of our faith, and how we might be inspired to be more like the saints who went before us. I wonder, what kind of saint are you drawn to? It tells you something about yourself. Two of the most popular saints that we often remember are St. Francis and Mother Teresa of Calcutta, Francis of Assisi. Famously, St. Francis of Assisi said, preach the gospel at all times, and if necessary, use words. And Mother Teresa said, if you judge people, you have no time to love them. Both of these saints gave up all their possessions. Both of these saints put the needs of others before themselves. There are also so many saints, a great cloud of witnesses, we say, people whose names we'll never know. They served quietly behind the scenes, maybe like our altar guild here at Trinity. Humbly, perhaps they were our parents or our teachers. Who are the saints in your family? Who are the ones who washed your feet and showed you love? Maybe they were doctors or priests who are saints to you, who led their lives focused on healing others, or perhaps they were good working people, loving and honest in their daily rounds. Or perhaps you know a saint, and maybe I know one or two people like this too, who had to lie in bed because of sickness for months, but they knew that they could pray for others, and in that way they were very saintly. Well, all of these folks are the ones who set faithful examples for us, the ones that we hope to emulate as we seek to be God's people in this world. When did All Saints begin? The day began in the sixth century when Pope Boniface consecrated the Pantheon at Rome. Maybe some of you have been to the Pantheon in Rome. It's an architectural wonder. The Pantheon was meant to be a place of solemn remembrance and thanksgiving for the life and witness of so many hundreds and hundreds of martyrs for the Christian faith. Men and women killed because they believed in Jesus Christ during the first three centuries of the, of the church. And we say that that is the seed of the church. The blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. Each Sunday when we say the creed, well, especially if we say the Apostles' Creed, we usually say the Nicene Creed in this service, but in the Apostles' Creed, we affirm that we believe in the communion of saints. That's our communion with the saints, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Imagine what it means to commune with the saints and pray for them. I think they also commune with us. They are that great cloud of witnesses who went before us and pray for us, those of us trying to be God's people. I think this is amazing, don't you, that there's this communion constantly going on. Most of the time, we're probably not even aware of it, but it's a wonderful thing to know that you are remembered by the saints. All saints can be a comforting tradition, and if you think of the English word comfort, calm means with, and fort means fortitude or strength. We read out the necrology, which is the list of those loved ones who have died today. They've gone to heaven before us, and it's a comfort to hear their names read out loud, acknowledged in the church. And so All Saints Day is a day to strengthen us so we can faithfully meet the challenges at hand in our own lifetime by embracing the companionship of the saints. Wouldn't it be a spiritual blessing to all of us to embrace the companionship of the saints? The saints in light, we say. If we could try to understand what they were trying to do in their lifetimes and follow their examples. 
Now the letter of Ephesians, which we heard read by, by Dabney a few minutes ago, talks about how we have received an inheritance of spiritual blessings. People you and I have known have passed down their faith to us. We call this the kerygma. They've passed it down and we've been baptized and we've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. And this inheritance is glorious and it's ours. It's these spiritual blessings that we've received, such as hearing the truth about how God has given us the revelation to know who he is through his son, Jesus Christ. The spiritual blessing of being a Christian is huge. It's so much more than any temporal blessing. Even blessings like health and wealth, which we put so much value on, spiritual values are so much greater. Spiritual blessings. To have your heart enlightened is the best blessing with which God blesses us and with, with which we are to bless God. And to bless others is to want to share our gifts generously with other, others. Giving is how we commit ourselves to the church and how we make God's community grow here at Trinity. It's always more blessed to give than to receive. But to be aware of our blessings requires a sense of gratitude, doesn't it? An attitude of gratitude. So St. Paul says, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. Blessings resound in the gospel this morning, too, as we hear the Beatitudes from St. Luke. We hear that blessings aren't always what we think they should be. For example, why would it be a blessing to be poor? But Jesus says, blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of God. It doesn't just say, it just says blessed are the poor. It doesn't say like in Matthew's gospel, blessed are the poor in spirit. It just says the poor. The poor and the despised of this earth in the literal sense of the word. What does it mean? A saint, I think, gives away their possessions, their money, and is literally poor like Francis or Teresa. Possessions must not obstruct our relationship with God and the relationship we have with God to do God's mission. Paul uses the terms to speak of Christ, though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor so that by his poverty you might become rich. And he means rich spiritually, not materially. Coveting things that belong to others, always wanting more, these are obsessions that keep us from doing God's will. So letting go of money on behalf of those we serve, that is the nobler path. And to me, this is what Jesus meant when he said, blessed are the poor. As followers of Jesus, what else are we called to do? We're called to love our enemies. That means we're not to reciprocate or retaliate when people do evil things to us. We're not to regard ourselves as victims. Instead of being reactive or responding in kind, we're called to act according to the principles of love and forgiveness and generosity, the principles that Jesus taught us. And really, these are the essence of the gospel, love, forgiveness, and generosity. So as we think about what all the saints have done for us and how connected we are to our ancestors, we're reminded that each of us walks on the shoulders of those who came before us. We walk in the footsteps of amazing people, not just in our own families, but our ancestors in the faith, those believers who passed down their faith to us. There's a beautiful song by a group called Sweet Honey in the Rock, and the song is called We Are. We are our grandmother's prayers. We are our grandfather's dreamings. We are the breath of our ancestors. We are the spirit of God. What a spiritual blessing to receive that. The song says we, not I, we, because Christianity isn't undertaken alone. Rather, it's the work of community. Liturgy means the work of the people. It takes all of us speaking words of encouragement to one another so that we might not forget how Christ calls us to be holy people, to aspire to be saints ourselves. 
And just as St. Paul encourages the Ephesians in their faith, so we too need to encourage each other so that we might not forget Christ and what he has done for us. That is our amazing spiritual inheritance that St. Paul speaks of, an inheritance of joy that lasts forever beyond our lifetimes. It's much, much finer than gold, sweeter than honey, greater than any money or possessions will ever be. And so today, when we baptize little Oliver and Elliot, we might ask, as we participate in this baptism, with our own renewing of our own baptismal vows, the promises we made when we were brought into this inheritance of our faith, ask yourself, as you look back, who gave you your spiritual inheritance? Give thanks for that saint in your life. And as you look forward, who is someone that you can pray for? Who is someone that you can encourage and lift up in your prayers? Encourage them in their faith. We're in a moment of time now to think not only of those whose footsteps we walk in, on whose shoulders we were carried, but also to think about the legacy that we are leaving for that next generation, for Oliver and Elliot's. <laughs> <laughs> for, for their generation, we lift them up. A blessed All Saints Day to each and every one of you. Thanks be to God.